Hello and very warm welcome to our special edition, the Question Hour show from the Parliament House Complex, the show where we bring you important unstart questions asked by the members of the Upper House in the previous session. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Rajat King. Well, thanks Kriti and thanks to everybody watching Question Hour on Rajya Sabha TV. Well, Rajat, you know, Question Hour is a very important tool in India's parliamentary democracy because it gives an opportunity to the members of both houses of parliament, whether Rajya Sabha or Lok Sabha, to question the government, to elicit answers from the government because the ministers are collectively accountable or answerable to the legislature. There are different types of questions, the start questions, the unstart and also the short notice ones. Our show will focus on the unstart ones, but there are start as well, of which answers are given orally on the floor of the house. And unstart questions on whom our show focuses its interest is basically are the questions where answers are deemed to be considered to be laid on the table of the house once proceedings are over. These are elaborate answers along with elaborate annexures on what the members have sought from ministries and departments. Right, so this show will focus on all the important unstart questions and Rajat, let's begin the show. And the first question in this edition of the Question Now show that we've picked up for our viewers is from member Bilingaya Yadav and this question pertains to the Ministry of Finance. And the member has asked the government whether the economic revival is key to bank's health and if so, the details thereof and the steps being taken in this regard and the results yielded so far. Well, a very important question indeed, talking about the banking sector in India. Now, in the reply, the Ministry said, now with regard to the economic revival and bank's health, it stated that the report on trends and progress of banking in India 2018-19, also termed as Banking Trend Report, published by the Reserve Bank of India in December 2019, observes that the health of banking sector hinges around a turnaround in the macroeconomic conditions. An account regarding economic revival and steps taken in this regard is given in Economic Survey 2019-20 in its chapter on State of the Economy, which deals with having Duly recognized financial stresses build up in economy. The government has taken significant steps towards speeding up of the insolvency resolution process under the Insolvency and the Bankruptcy Code, that is IBC, and easing of credit, particularly for the stressed real estate and non-banking financial companies, also referred to as NBFCs. And the impact of critical measures taken to boost investment present green shoots for growth in the second half 2019-20 and the financial year 2020-21. Further, an account regarding banks' health and steps taken in this regard is given in RBI's Financial Stability Report, published in December 2019, as per which the capital adequacy ratio of Scheduled commercial banks has improved significantly from 14.3% in March 2019 to 15.1% in September 2019. Following a recapitalization of public sector banks or the PSBs by the government, their provisions coverage ratio has risen from 61.5% from 60.5% over the same period, implying increased resilience of banking sector and their net non-performing assets ratio has declined reflecting increased provisioning so clearly a detailed answer reply on a very important question well moving on the next question was asked by member shantan hussein from ministry of personnel public grievances and pension the member sought where the government is aware that exam patterns of upsc civil services examination is discriminatory in nature for hindi medium and regional language candidates while giving a specific reply to this question, the government says that the pattern of examination is designed to give an equal opportunity to all the candidates. While the civil services preliminary examination is by and large language neutral, as far as the mains examination is concerned, the general observation is that majority of candidates voluntarily opt to write the examination in English language. The General Studies Paper 2 was introduced from CSE 2011. Now, several representations were received against the introduction of General Studies Paper 2 from the candidates claiming that it, this paper is discriminatory against the candidates from Hindi medium with also the request to provide additional attempts on account of the changes made in the pattern of examination from CSC 2011. Now, these representations were carefully examined by the government and it was decided to grant one compensatory or additional attempt in CSC 2015 to those candidates who had appeared in CSC 2011. 
Let's move on to the next question asked by member S. Muthukurappan and this question pertains to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. And Mr. Muthukurappan has asked whether it is a fact that according to the Central Bureau of Health Intelligence National Health Profile, India has registered an improved sex ratio and a decline in birth and death rates with non-communicable diseases dominating over communicable diseases in the total disease burden of this country. Giving a reply, the ministry said the Central Bureau of Health Intelligence compiles a national health profile based on information received from various ministries and departments. The information regarding birth, death, sex ratio are based on the data given by the Office of Registrar General of India. Now, as per the census conducted by Registrar General of India, the trend in sex ratio has improved to 943 in the year 2011 from 926 in the year 1991. Now, as per the national health profile, India has declining birth rate that is from 2008 per 1000 in 2015 to 20.2 in 2017 and the death rate 6.5 in the year 2015 to 6.3 in 2017 over last three years based on, on the last SRS bulletin published by Registrar General of India. Now, reports are also available on the official website of the Government of India. Now, the, the disease burden is based on ICMR India State Level Disease Burden Initiative Report, India Health of the Nation States, published in November 2017. The estimated proportion of all deaths due to NCDs in six, is 61.8% in 2016, which was 37.9% in the year 1990. Among the different age groups, the proportion of death due to NCDs in 40 to 69 years is 73.2%. Well, moving on to next question that was asked by member Parimal Nathwani from Ministry of Tourism. The member asked about whether there is an immense potential for development of rural tourism in the country and what are the details of the same. Responding to this query by member Parimal Nathwani, the government says that rural tourism has been identified as one of the niche tourism sectors or areas for development in the country by the Ministry of Tourism. Under the Swadesh Darshan scheme, the ministry is developing theme-based thematic tourism circuits in the country. Now, rural circuit is one of the 15 thematic circuits identified for development under the scheme. Submission of project proposals by the state governments or the UT administrations under the Swadesh Darshan scheme is a continuous process. The projects for development under, under the scheme are identified in consultation with the respective state governments or UT administrations and are sanctioned subject to availability of funds, submission of suitable detailed project reports, adherence to same guidelines and also utilization of funds thereafter by respective states or UTs. Amnesty has also instituted a national tourism award in the category of best rural or agri plantation tourism projects to motivate the stakeholders in the tourism sector for implementing such novel projects. And let's move on to the next question asked by member KK Ragesh and this question pertains to the Ministry of Power. And member Ragesh has asked the government about the total installed and utilized capacity of non-nuclear based power plants and also the reason of underutilization of such plants. In the response, the ministry said the total installed generation capacity of non-nuclear based power plants as on 31st December 2019 is 362.01 gigawatt. The utilization of these operational plant depends upon electricity demand which varies at every instant of time. At the same time, 100% availability of power plants cannot be ensured because of a variety of reasons like shutdown for maintenance of power plants, breakdown of power plants, non-sunny periods for solar power plants, non-windy periods for wind power plants or windmills. The maximum and minimum electricity demand met during the current year was around 183 gigawatt and 97 gigawatts respectively now due to these inherent characteristics of electricity demand and power plants it's not possible to have 100 percent utilization of the power plants but adequate availability of generation capacities is ensured to meet electricity demand in the country well time for a very short break more on the other side of question hour stay tuned to Rajya Sabha television Welcome back. You're watching Question Hour on Raj Sabha TV. Now, moving on to next question that was asked member KG Alphonse from Ministry of Earth Sciences. 
the question asked a member was whether the 37th Indian Ocean scientific expedition to Antarctica has been successful and what are the major findings of this important expedition. Well, responding to this query, the government says that during the 37th Indian scientific expedition to Antarctica, 31 scientific long-term and short-term scientific projects were carried out by 16 institutes and universities. Major projects and findings of this expedition are a joint team of scientists from National Centre for Polar and Ocean Research and Norwegian Polar Institute conducted various glaciological, meteorological and measurements to understand past and present ice dynamics and mass balance of ice shelf and adjacent ice rises under the Indo-Norwegian collaborative project called Mass Balance Dynamics and Climate of the Central Groning Land Coast and East Antarctica. A 153-meter-long ice core from this ice rise was retrieved to examine the past climate and the link to the oceanic processes in the past millennium. Scientists from National Institute of High Security Animal Diseases of Indian Council of Agricultural Research investigated the animal metaworms by studying the fecal samples of Weddell seal and also penguin and also South Polar scoa as well as from the soil of penguin rookery. Diversity and abundance analysis reveal the presence of 416, 584, 550 and 727 different viruses across 41, 57, 55 and 60 different virus families in fecal metaworm of penguin, seal, polar scova and also the orthogenic soil respectively. And joining us on the question now show is Rajya Sabha member Mr. KJ Alphonse. Mr. Alphonse, welcome to Rajya Sabha Television and thank you so much for joining us through this virtual platform in the era of social distancing, sir. Thanks, Kirti. Thank you. Good to see you. So, you know, our show question hour focuses on all the important questions asked by the members of the upper house and the written replies given by the government in the previous session and we were just going through all these questions and you asked a very interesting question which was about the 37th Indian Ocean Scientific Expedition to Antarctica and the outcomes and also the major findings. Tell us about the relevance of this question, sir. Yeah, I've been asking a lot of questions about uh, the environment in the parliament because I'm deeply concerned about what's happened to the environment. I think the human species basically has wrecked the environment, has destroyed the environment. Look at the kind of global warming, the pollution which we experience. I don't think the human species is going to survive for another 100 years, frankly speaking. So can we redeem it? So I think that this 31st um, uh, mission to the Antarctica was all part of this. Uh, India's great concern about environment. How do we do a little more to understand the universe, how it works, how the human species can do a little better in making it better. I mean, one of the shocking things which I, I would like to place on record is uh, this January, uh, this, sorry, this February 2020, the temperature of one of the Arctic regions was 18.6 degrees centigrade, which is as much as the temperature in uh, Los Angeles. Can you believe this? Why is this happening? Look at the global uh, warming. Look at the kind of uh, melting of the ice that's happening across the Antarctic and the Arctic because of which the sea levels are rising. And many of the, many of the cities which are located on the sea coast is going to submerge in a few years. And uh, so this... It's a lot of danger. So this 31st, um, 37th expedition, which was, of course, in collaboration with, uh, with the uh, Nor Norwegian government, it's called uh, MADIS. So it was in association with them. And we undertook this, uh, uh, this uh, study. And we had, of course, from India, we had the National Center for Polar and uh, Ocean Research, uh, NCPOR, and also ICAR had another mission. So there were uh, 31... Uh, Major projects were were uh, uh, done by this 37th mission, and uh, some, of course, involving agriculture. Basically, this was uh, studying three things: the geophysical, the glaciological, and the meteorological aspects of uh, you know the Antarctic region. So these were the three things which were which they were studying. And of course, uh, uh, the first study in uh, association with Norway concentrated on a huge chunk of ice and the kind of uh, metamorphosis it would have gone through over millions of years and what has happened now because of global warming and other reasons. So this was one of the things which they studied. And Norway is, of course, a global leader in this kind of a study. And second study, of course, was uh, conducted by the IC, ICAR in association with the subsidiary organization of ICAR, that is the Institute of High uh, uh, 
severity in of in animal diseases so this was basically studying uh, you know the the facial matters of uh, of of the uh, animals uh, uh, in in the antarctic region to find out what are the diseases you know which is uh, which uh, they are carrying within themselves i mean as a result of possibly the transformation that is happening in the antarctic region and at last so basically it was study of the viruses and other things in the in the in the animal species out there so both these um, uh, study number one on the ice part its life and its transformations and on the animal species i think all this has been successful and of course antarctica is home to you know the biggest uh, population of penguins whales seals and of course it's something very 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 uh, unique to antarctica krill i mean that's a, that's a variety of shrimp so which is of course now becoming hugely endangered because of uh, over harvesting so all these things are uh, are study and of course antarctica is a treasure house of knowledge and therefore um, uh, india has been very active there there are uh, very many countries who are active and have very active participation there so i think this kind of uh, expeditions are extremely useful they bring home a whole lot of knowledge back to us to take a better care of the universe and any specific suggestion that you have for the government in this regard no i think it's just not a government uh, kirti i have been talking telling people each of us is responsible for the upkeep of the universe see the prime minister and the government can declare something but how much can the government do ultimately the action lies within us how much are we willing to pollute how much are we willing to give up how much are we going to eat up the resources of the universe let me give you one example when you buy a jeans it costs 5000 liters of water to process a, 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 a jeans 5000 liters how much of the resources of the universe are we eating up i keep telling people i have only one uh, uh, this jacket i'm wearing is about 30 years old i have only one blue, blue blazer and that i bought it when i was an ias probationer 40 years back why do i need another one i have two pairs of jeans which are at least 25 years old i have exactly one pair of shoes why do we need more i think we are very greedy reaching of eating of the resources of the universe and that pollutes and that's a reason for pollution let's do a little bit less of polluting from our side and let's take a little better care of the rest of the universe the animal kingdom the birds like during this lockdown i feed about 500 birds in my compound in delhi all separate there are about 25 species coming here including 200 eagles each has a its own menu don't we have the responsibility to take care of them i think we have so these are some of the things which i think are so important which beyond the government each of us need to do all right so those were important points that you made thank you so much for joining us and sharing those details with us sir thank you kirti thank you very much and let's move on to the last question of this edition of the question hour show asked by member nadimul haq and this question pertains to the ministry of earth sciences and mr haq has asked the government to whether there has been an unexpected rise in natural disasters like cyclones and floods over the last 3 years and the steps taken by the government or the ministry in its forecasting systems to make it more accurate in the wake of increasing climate disasters replying in affirmative the ministry said the country has witnessed increase in extreme weather events like extremely heavy rainfalls leading to floods severe heat waves and cyclones in the recent past now the changing climate scenario central and north india and western himalayas have become more prone to extreme rainfall events whereas north northwest and, no- and neighboring central india are prone to expansion of semi arid regions indian monsoon also shows a natural variability in seasonal rainfalls with epochal variations even though it can be termed as a direct cause events like heavy rainfall in various parts of country have a possible linkage to global warming since climate model simulation brings out intensification of extreme precipitation in various parts of the world due to global warming Also several scientific studies bring out possible linkages of climate change with sudden occurrence of rainfall extreme and the temperature extremes well that said thanks for watching this edition of questioner stay tuned to rajasabha tv take care and stay safe